Welcome to Electra Online. Before we talk about the supermassive stars becoming red giants and see what happens to them then, let's talk about the medium-sized stars, the size, the size of the sun, and a little bit larger. Of course, our sun is actually a little bit bigger than the medium-sized star. But let's take, talk about stars in the range of one to two and a half times the mass of the sun. So when they finish their journey on the main sequence, in other words, the time that it takes for them to turn hydrogen into helium, of course, it takes about 10 billion years for stars the size of the sun, about a billion years or so for, size, for stars about two and a half times the mass of the sun. Okay, so after they finish burning up all their hydrogen into helium, then what happens is they begin to swell up because what happens is they run out of fuel inside the core of the star and they begin to burn hydrogen beyond the core as the, as the temperature begins to get hotter inside the core, as the core begins to collapse and additional temperature, additional heat is generated, it begins to burn in the shell around the core, causing the outside of the star to swell up and the inside of the star begins to collapse as the core runs out of fuel. That causes the star to become larger and larger and larger, brighter and brighter and brighter, and eventually we hit to the point where the helium flash occurs. That's where the temperature inside the core reaches 100 million degrees and that's enough of a temperature to begin to convert helium into carbon. There's a sudden onset of activity in the core. It shows all of a sudden the brightening of the stars called the helium flash. And then the star collapses down into a new size and it reaches what we call the horizontal branch where it stays as, a, as a, what we call a red giant. This is where the star is in the red giant stage and it keeps in the red giant for about, as a red giant for about 50 million years in a relatively stable format. Towards the end, the star begins to swell up again in size as the core begins to run out of helium. So the core begins to collapse, starts and again generating additional heat, additional temperature, and then the shell around that begins to fuel, begins to convert helium into carbon. And what happens then? And then around that we have hydrogen burning into helium. The star begins to swell again and it starts going up into the second, what we call giant branch called the asymmetric giant branch, which is kind of parallel to the initial red giant branch. For stars as large as the sun or larger, you see that there's some additional activity taking place inside the core. Not only does the core fill up with carbon, but the core may also start, start burning carbon into oxygen and start burning oxygen into neon. To some extent, the, the core will then fill with carbon, oxygen, and neon. And eventually, as these types of stars turn into white dwarfs, they're not just balls of carbon like for the low mass stars but they also contain oxygen and neon but essentially they will also turn into white dwarfs at the end of their life cycle but that's not what's going to happen to the very largest of the large stars so at least now we have a reference this is very similar to what happens to low mass stars but for the very massive stars a different process will take place and for that we'll have to go to the next videos and that is how it's done